What's going on, arcade nerds? We are in my messy garage. Filled with all kinds of garbage and whatnot. Anyways, this, this video, we're going to revisit this video pinball. Now, if you watched the very first video, you may know that this monitor came out of it. Also, this monitor has the board removed and this is the board that was laying in the bottom of the cabinet, which is the same board for that chassis, but I also dug up that chassis that was bad that came out of the orbiter. I found this chassis, and I found this chassis just in my parts junk. So, we may get lucky. We may be able to just plug that chassis in and have it fire up, maybe recap it and so on. Or if it doesn't work, we're going to have to go further down the rabbit hole. So, I guess first things first, what we did is we got, I got Orbiter, Orbiter turned around. And so now that monitor plug will plug into this monitor. So, I guess we're going to just put things back together and see if it fires up. And if it does, great. We'll recap it. We'll rebuild it. We have the technology. If not, we'll have to, you know, work on some chassis. All right, let's get started. So, what do you think the odds this is going to work? I don't know. It doesn't look too bad. But <laughs> nothing obvious, I guess, but <laughs> Ob yeah. Just trying to get everything going. Get it? There's so many pins. I know, sometimes. Pressure's on now. You're on camera. I know. You look like an idiot. Why? <laughs> oh, why can't you get that in? I know. There's so oh. many. How dare I? <laughs> get it? I think so. If it looks like you got it. I think you're overthinking it. Maybe. You got it. You got it. All right. Put, put, the, put the neck on. Hold on. It's still going to... There we go. Now it feels like it's going down. Okay, put the, the socket on. Okay, let's find a... Uh, uh, we got to get an extension cord in here to turn this on. Oh, right there. Okay. It should be... Yeah, it's still plugged in. Hold on. Before you plug it in, uh, yeah. plug this in. I know. Just trying to get all the cords in one place. All right, turn that sucker on. Ready for the... You have the other end of that cord is plugged in. Yeah, it is. Okay, you ready for the fireworks right. show? Yeah. <laughs> okay, go for it. I didn't hear any high voltage. <clears throat> I see neck glow. You do? I don't see neck glow. Oh. oh, yeah. Come on, baby. Okay, there's a brightness knob in the back. Can we hold the camera? Hold the back. Yeah, hold the camera. Let me go back and play with the brightness. I can't see at this angle. I'm just gonna start turning knobs up. Anything? Uh, nope. Anything? Nope. Anything? Nope. Nothing, huh? Mm -mm. Hold on. Let me uh, uh, turn off this. The light. Yeah, if I could reach One of the it. lights. <laughs> yeah, here, I'm just going to unplug it here, unplug it there. Oh, we do have, we have some. Ooh, get out. It looks like it's out of sync. Yeah. All right, hold on. We stand in the shadow a little bit. Ooh, we Let's might see. just be able to recap this sucker and we're good to go, man. It's kind of dim though, isn't it? That's probably caps. Yeah, my problem is I can't <coughs> see the on the other side. <laughs> yep. Can't see the knobs I'm turning. Oh, 
There we go. I see something. There it is. That's something. Legible. Okay, let me get on the other side so I can play with it some more. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Look at that, man. All right. Okay, so we have a terrible pitcher. Let's do a cap kit and let's see what we get. Yes! This is the great. That means it's going to be an easy, easy ordeal. Yeah. It's not going to be All chasing right. our tails. Let's, let's do a cap kit. <laughs> Kelly took this out, and just for shits and giggles, I'm going to try this one. It's the same chassis, and it looks nice and clean. If this uh, shows some sort of picture, we might as well do recap this one rather than the other one. Uh, now, keep in mind, I'm, I'm looking for low-hanging fruit. I'm not... <clears throat> I'm not trying to, you know, find one that's already broken and do the, the most... I'm trying to do the least amount of work possible. Does that make sense? So... <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's, let's put this, let's put this chassis in and see what happens. Now, there's one thing to mention. Yes, this does not, this has all original caps, so obviously these are going to be out of spec. But often, and this is what worries me a little bit, often when you have a dim picture, it's not because of the caps on this board, it's actually because of the caps inside this mega cap. <laughs> now, when I say mega cap, what I'm really, I'm really talking about, there's actually multiple capacitors inside one case. Uh, so for example, right here's your little pinout right here. The can itself is negative, and inside this giant cap, you have all these capacitors. Hopefully that clears up, you can see it in the picture. So there's like four capacitors in one case. And often, when you have a dim picture, it's because this is out of value. And if you have a scrambled picture or something like that, it's often because these caps are out of value. So, hey, I don't know. I might even, just for giggles, put this whole frame on there if I don't have the parts to replace this. Replacing these caps is kind of messy. The reason why it's kind of messy is because they don't make this cap no more. And uh, so I would have to uh, point to point solder a bunch of garbage on the bottom of this thing to make it work again. And I've often wondered, has anyone made like a PCB that goes on here? I could do that. That might be kind of cool. Make a PCB that has four lugs in the bottom and sticks out. Anyway, I'm thinking out loud. Anyway, so let's try to put this on that and see what happens. Okay, just plug it in. We still have a glowing neck. Okay, we have a picture again. So that means both of those chassis actually work. And the picture is just as dim, is it not? <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Hold this camera real quick. Just for giggles. I can't see the knobs because it's right there. Mm -hmm. I'm fat. And that's a contort. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I recognize this. When you move the knobs, and you get a, get a brightness for a second and then it settles. It's definitely that big cap. Along with all the other caps, I'm sure. Well, I guess let's recap whichever uh, one Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Just for <coughs> shits and giggles. Um, move the, that chassis over here. Okay. Because it has that cap that I'm talking about okay. on it already. Actually, could this be a hair bit brighter? I can see it. I mean... It's out of sync, huh? Yeah, hold on. One of these. Or am I crazy? It's not out of sync, No, it's it? not out of sync. It's just flickery. Yeah, it was out of sync. Was it? <coughs> there you go. Now it's in sync. Yeah, but now I can't see any writing. Look at that. It's slow. See how it's folding over? Mm-hmm. Ah, there we go. There we go. That's how we need to look at it. <coughs> okay, yeah, yeah, so definitely out of focus. Just just for giggles, let's put that other metal chassis over on this. Okay. See if we get an improvement, and then the best best of the two chassis, then we'll start capping. All right. <coughs> <coughs> the burning is real on that one, man. Oh, yeah, I got to look around. I don't know if I have any more. 
There might 23 be, inch black and white. There might be eat. one more tube on the front porch. The one on the front porch is bad, is but it? I never did the, uh, my mind went blank, jeez. <laughs> the tool we have to repair tubes, jeez. Oh, um, now you got me too. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Rejuvenator. Rejuvenator, thank you. I never try to rejuve it. <clears throat> All right. Well, rather than just swap this chassis for that chassis, um, Kelly just grabbed this board off of that chassis. Now, you may, may notice that this chassis is a 19V101, and this chassis is <clears throat> a 22V101. What's the difference? The only difference that I could think of is a slight bit of higher voltage from the flyback, which isn't even enough, isn't even significant enough to make a big, big deal. Um, <clears throat> most 99.9% .9 of all, all the same parts between both chassis. And you can't interchange them, sort of. You can't put this chassis on a 19-inch tube, but you can put a 19-inch chassis on a 23-inch tube. <clears throat> Reason why is you don't want the tube to have too high of a voltage because it can emit uh, X-ray radiation. Actually, it's actually even when you do that, it's on the verge of not emitting X-ray, but to play it safe, you don't do stupid things like that. <laughs> Anyways, remember how I said earlier that um, this capacitor is kind of a pain in the ass? Well, part of the reason it's a pain in the ass is... Let me get this. I'm holding this with another hand. All right. All the components are soldered by hand. It's called point-to-point. -point. Now, this is kind of a throwback from vacuum tube days. Around this point, they're kind of just getting out of the vacuum tube kind of stuff, and this is how they did stuff back then. There's no circuit board. Well, there is. It's kind of a circuit board point-to-point -point hybrid, this chassis. And <clears throat> so in this mess right here is your capacitor. Look at all the crap surrounding this. So, you know, especially if you if you are new to electronics and a little wheezy and worried about where things are going to go, how would you like to, to disconnect 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 wires from one capacitor? And then make sure they all go back in the same place when you're done. So, <clears throat> so I can understand how some people might be a little wheezy about or worried about replacing that one cap. Uh, before this video is over, I may actually replace this cap and we'll see um, <clears throat> how things go. Anyways, Kelly is downstairs putting caps in that PCB. And when she comes back, we'll try it, but I really think it's probably this cap. Anyways, I don't know if anyone reproduces that cap or not. Anyone, uh, let me know in the comments, does anyone make a replacement for this cap? I think it might be a smart thing for me to do if no one else does it. You can make a little PCB that plugs in this cap's place with the individual caps. That'd be kind of an easy, cheap, one-night project that people might be able to, you know, benefit from. Anyways, so let's zoom in and test it again with the cap, with the PCB cap. Okay, here's an update. Kelly put all new capacitors on the chassis. We plugged it in with the exact same dim picture, which really verifies it's gotta be that bastard. So we're gonna try to go the path of least resistance and Kelly is going to try this chassis because who knows it might have a good capacitor on it. That big capacitor. So let's try it and see what happens. Well we tried swapping the chassis here <clears throat> and the exact same capacitor multi-capacitor thing is bad. A really dim picture, and yes, I know the picture has rotated 90 degrees. It's only because the yoke is on 90 degrees. So, I guess we're going to have to go downstairs, root around for capacitors to replace this one multi-cap. Okay, so underneath this capacitor here, I clipped the leads, all four leads to this capacitor, and I added these four caps down here. Now, it's not pretty, but uh, that's it. That's how this entire chassis is. And I don't like this, so I'm working on something else to make it even better. So, um, but this is going to work for now. This will work today. Um, this capacitor, which I just so happen to have another one right here, like I mentioned before, it has four capacitors 
in one can. So, let's say we have one giant capacitor, okay? And the terminals on this are A, B, C, and D. Now, some of these capacitors, there is two different markings. Some of these were marked, uh, was it, what was it, triangle, square, and D. So this could be triangle, square, and D, and so on. But in my situation, I have A, B, C, D. Now the terminals on these are 800 microfarad at 125 volts. This can be substituted for 1000 microfarad at 125 volts. Okay, And terminal B is originally 200 microfarad <clears throat> at 100 volts. This can be substituted for 220 <clears throat> microfarad. Now this one over here was 200 UF at 50 volts. This can also be substituted for 220. And the final one is 20 UF at 200 volts. This can be substituted for 22. The reason why I'm mentioning these substitutions is because these are unusual sizes that really don't make anymore. But the, luckily the replacements are well within tolerance, well, well within range for this monitor to work. So, anyways, let me show you what I'm working on. Well, actually, what I just ordered here. Um, to, to have a, a better replacement, a more suitable replacement for wiring more point-to-point -point crap on the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm making a circuit board, and I just ordered it. Uh, to replace this big stupid capacitor that always goes bad, but you never see them in cap kits. At least I haven't. If someone knows of a, of a replacement for this, let me know. I would greatly appreciate uh, learning where to find it. Anyway, so let me show you what, what I'm coming up with here. Okay, remember how we said we have terminals labeled A, B, C, and D. That's just four capacitors, and they all go to a ground. The ground is the case of the, tran of the transistor, of the capacitor. So I made a quick little circuit board right here. So we have our ground going around, and believe it or not, this is the same exact size, actually a hair bigger than the actual uh, girth, <laughs> than the girth of the capacitor. <laughs> um, so this will actually fit right in where it's supposed to go. Now this capacitor is broken, but there's like, a, normally there's four four lugs here here and here and here does that make sense there's four lugs that come out of the bottom of this capacitor and those are ground so we have our one two three four lugs and then you have your four inner lugs and that would be this right here one two three four and then they just go to the four capacitors that are normally on this thing so they should actually go right into the chassis and so on I ordered uh, 30 of them figured what the heck it was like 12 bucks to get like 30 PCBs might as well that way when I run into this again I have a lifetime supply and I'll always be able to uh, replace those capacitors if anyone else would be interested in this circuit board that I just ordered let me know so right here is what the circuit board that I'm making looks like there's the top and there's the bottom and so on. Anyways, like I said, this is just a hair bigger diameter than the actual capacitor itself. So it'll be something like that. Just for giggles, I just uh, started looking at this other chassis that has one of those capacitors also and check it out just so you can kind of visualize what that board will look like this is on a PCB right well on the bottom there's that capacitor I'm talking about see the ground terminals on the outside and the capacitor terminals on the inside anyways I think we are ready to plug this 
over here and let's see if we have our brightness fixed or not. Well, it is brighter, but I'm still not happy. It should be a little it should be brighter than this. Don't you think, Kelly? Maybe a little, yeah. Well, she kind of disagrees. Uh, she thinks that, that that's fine. I think that should be a hair brighter. That's the demo for the game. <sighs> Anyways, I think this is this is what I think. I think I'm going to be on the lookout for another 23 inch black and white tube. I think. Oh, I might have one in this. Or do I? I don't remember. I don't remember either. I think we, did we take that out for order? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, like once the game's going, it really looks uh, dim. Well, that's that game though, but. There. I think that's a little dim. I'm um, taking into account the really bright lights in here too. Yeah, we do have some super bright like shop lights in here. Um, unplug the shop lights real quick, would you? Of course, everything, anything looks looks bright in a dark room. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't think that's that bad. it's, uh, yes, it looks good now. <laughs> I, I suppose once it's in there and everything's all black and like black lights and everything, it'll be fine. I mean, once it gets in the house. I just feel like that should be brighter. I, I don't know. I think that's fine. Well, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it is brighter than before, but I'm still, that's just my opinion. Okay, so let's, uh put this monitor in there and I think I'm going to be on the lookout for, that for another tube because this one's pretty burned although once it's in the dark you know you can tell man check it out check out where the, the burns are where the uh, I know, but the game is the game that is burned in so. yeah I know I know that that's one thing that me and Kelly will always talk about like well okay burn sucks nobody wants to see you see a burned picture uh, tube, but it, at least if it's the same burn as the game, it's a little more acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so we got to get this in there, and I, I don't know. I might call it. I, I I might call it after that. I don't know. What do you think? No you you want to dig around for the harness? Uh, I know we have the harness here. Yeah, we do here. We took the harness out of that, and I used it for a test rig to fix the board. Still gonna fix the, uh, well, I just would at least like to see the a picture right now, just a picture going, and okay. then and then then we'll end the video. If we see a picture in the cabinet, I could put sound like a plan. I, I, never mind. What? Put, put a picture of the picture of the game. Put an iPad in there. Put, so <laughs> here. maybe I should gut uh, one of those now one ups. There, now there's a picture in the cabinet. <laughs> there's a picture of a car in the cabinet. I like these pictures. <laughs> I better now we get to demonetize or some bullshit. <laughs> All right. All right. By the way, I don't go reading Playboys all the time. But if you if you say you haven't seen a a uh, 1979, what well, is any arcade stuff in here? I guess you'll never know. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I got a whole bunch of those from my grandma. My grandma passed away, and she had tons and tons of Playboys. I assume it was my dad's. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. The monitor is now inside. <clears throat> By the way, this is the next day. Um, I, I sat down on the couch, and I uh, plugged in the camera to charge, and fell asleep. <laughs> so here is the board. Now, I lost a lot of uh, footage, so I guess you guys aren't going to see how I fixed the board. But long story short, the EPROMs, or the bipolar proms that go right here, were, uh, some of them were bad. So I burned EPROMs in their place and put them here. This board has an option where you could use the original bipolar proms. There's also a different revision where it used EPROMs. 
So, there's the problems there. Also, these two bipolars right here, they were, uh, they are the playfield uh, ROMs. So in other words, the playfield would show up because of these, the data from these two chips. And one of those chips was bad. And I did not have a blank bipolar and to, to, to make, make a new one. And so just for giggles, I made a, uh, a PCB that allows me to use the, the lower nibble of an EEPROM. See, the way, this, so the way these EEPROMs work is there's eight bits, one byte of data, right? And the way this works is there's four bits, another four bits, so you have your higher and lower nibble. So, so in other words, four bits equal one nibble, eight bits equal one byte. So I made a, a little PCB and I ordered them and I was going, and I had planned to replace that with uh, a 2716 EEPROM. And um, anyways, the, the parts came in the mail, I was planning on building it. Then I happened to go, go to Todd Tucky's place and he happened to have a stray uh, video pinball board sitting there. And so I ended up buying the video pinball board from him and stealing these two chips and I just put them in my board. Anyway, so long story short, now my board is working. And I have a spare to fix someday if I ever need it. So, um, Kelly is right now cleaning the glass. That glass is gonna go in here. Here's the harness laying around. Look how rusty that, that case is. But, yeah, so, let's throw this harness in and let's at least get a picture before, before we wrap up this video. Also, something I wanted to mention. Um, I still do have the original Playfield PCB. Now this PCB is just a PCB that mounts all the LEDs to work on the Playfield. Now if you don't know, there's a, a two-way mirror and you see, you see the reflection of these lights and the reflection of this Playfield. Okay, All the text on this are in a mirror image because once it reflects the mirror you'll be able to read the regular text. Anyways, um, I made this board to replace the original board. Why? The original board, what, what could go wrong, right? Well, I wanted to put uh, newer LEDs. I originally thought maybe I'll put color changing LEDs. They actually sell little LEDs. It's the same form factor as this LED, but it'll change colors. So I thought, yeah, let's, let's make it change colors. And then after thinking about this, now let's leave it original. But I did want to put modern LEDs because these are going to be a, a little bit brighter than the original uh, type of LED that was on it. And I did not want to ruin the original PCB's originality by putting the brighter LEDs on it. So I decided to go ahead and make more PCBs. So this is a brand new PCB that uh, I made. And, you know, it's of the original video pinball, you know, PCB. Okay, got the glass cleaned up, or Kelly did at least. And I uh, thought I'd mention, but you might notice a couple extra chips on this board. This, ch this board didn't have chips in these locations that were populated. Why are these chips here? Well, um, I'm going to see if I can get the video off of Facebook. But I did some experimentation on this board where I colorized it. And I hooked up to a color monitor and so on, just for fun. Um, so I undid it. There was jumpers all over the back. And I undid all those jumpers and so on just to try to do an experiment making a color. So here, Kelly, put this in the thing. Rather than doing things the correct way, uh, in other words, getting a video off of my phone and putting it on the SD card, I'm just recording my screen. Right now I'm in Facebook and I just wanted to show that hack I did uh, to colorize uh, video pinball. Now this is not the greatest method, this is the worst method possible, but it did work. I, th and I thought it would be kind of cool. I wanted to see how simplified it could be done. It's not like there's any sort of amazing engineering feat here, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, there's a couple spots on the video pinball board that were empty, and they were used in case you wanted to hack the board in some way. Um, so I added uh, two chips. And go over here and check out the screen. Now, so there's uh, four colors in total right now. I have to play the game to see them all. Let's uh, see. We have uh, purple, uh, yellow, green, and blue. Kind of cool. 
Anyways, the way, the way video pinball works is you have two video signals, two. One video signal is called the ball, and that is the ball. Okay, the presence or absence of the ball, depending on where the location of the screen. The other video signal is play field, okay? Now the play field consists of all the text and all the graphics on the play field. And those two video signals are combined, okay? So, if you want to colorize something, you can go, go in the schematic, you can actually separate those two signals and make one, let's say, red, and one, one let's say, green, or whatever, you know? So, so, it's easy enough to get at least two colors on this board. And so, I did a quick little hack where I uh, tapped into the video counters. Now, keep in mind, um, let's draw a bunch of invisible lines across the screen, right? Well, it, it, it's at specific times, you may, up, you may have these lines active, or down here, these lines active, and so on. So I tapped into the counters, and I said, when those counters are active, colorize yet another color. So I found out there was different areas that had just had text, and they were always the text were always in those same locations. So at that specific uh, video timing, I had those that, that data added with let's say another color, and that's how I was able to get that. Now there is way better ways to do this. If you wanted to, you could create your own lookup table. Where the, where the, remember I pointed out the, um, the, the ROMs on the playfield, the playfield ROMs? You could have those when this is active, and that with, a, with another ROM, in other words, so, and that data with a color. So you could have, geez, as many colors as you want on here, just, just about. <laughs> if you really wanted to feel froggy, you could put 256 colors on one of these things. Um, <clears throat> so that is in. Everything's kind of just hanging for now. Uh, Kelly, plug this in. Let's plug this thing in. And I want to... Where's the original? I want to at least show the... Ah, there it is. Okay. Hold this camera, Kelly. Mm -hmm. This tube takes a while. It takes a while to uh, charge up and show a picture. Okay, we got a picture slowly coming in. Jeez, see, I think this is too dim, man. Let me take off this one. Oh, dust is just. Okay, we got a picture coming up. Oh yeah. It's just collecting on there. The dust is real. <laughs> anyway, so I mean. Yes, you can see the picture. It's it's getting there. Now, um, here is the original video pinball playfield PCB. Okay, and here is the one that I made myself. If you could, yeah, if you could see all that. So I want to show a comparison. And, oh, by the way, Kelly, do we have another blank? We have another blank of these, don't we? I think we have one more. Okay, this one I'm going to do. I'm going to test this and just to see the brightness. Now I happen to know that these LEDs are going to be dim LEDs. Why? Because all of this type of red LEDs were sort of dim, you know, 40 years ago. And these newer LEDs are way, 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 way brighter. So I just want to make a little comparison. Let's see what they, they look like between the two. This is the plug that connects all that. Can you get that in there? Ah, I'm gonna have to reach it. Get in there. Okay, so now you can see the reflection on the ground. You see all those LEDs? Now keep in mind, try to try to memorize about about the brightness of that of that. Because now I'm going to substitute in my own board. If I can get this unplugged now. <laughs> and we'll see how that looks. Yeah, that is just screaming, Way screaming bright. bright. I don't think it's too bright either. I mean, you know, it could be too bright, but I don't think it's too bright. Uh, now, now what I'm what I'm getting at is we have another one of these blank, right, Kelly? I believe so. I'm debating on maybe I'll do it this video. Debating on putting all color changing LEDs. <laughs> you know why? Okay, okay. Like, all right, the way the color changing color changers work is the first time so if, as soon as the power is given to these LEDs they're red but if the LED, if the LED, and they're red for about a second or two 
and if they're on more than a second or two they start cycling through colors green blue and so on so I thought well the quick flashes will always be red but the LEDs that are on all the time will change colors so it'll actually kind of, that's my opinion I think it'll it'll look like it's like the computer is smarter than it really is as if this option was programmed you know what I mean <laughs> so uh, let's let's uh before I end this video let's populate a color changer Right. If I can find the blank, that is. If I can't find the find the blank, I guess that's it. But <laughs> I think I know where it's at. But yeah. There it is. Not bad. Not bad. I just I like things to be as bright as freaking possible. And uh I think this monitor is about 90% where it should be. Oh, turn off okay, alright, turn off the lights, turn off the lights. There's a there's a shop light right over my head. It's bright. Oh, you had it for a second. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's probably about what it's Yeah, in I mean, house. in the house, yes, that's about what you're, what you're going to see. Now, uh, keep in mind, we still have the play field. Yep. And if you haven't watched the earlier video, you see all these holes in the play field? See these holes? Those, this is where the, the PCB is going to be. Behind the play field is going to come through these holes to shine these lights. So anyways, just for fun, let's populate another one of these and let's populate with all color changers and see what that looks like. All right, I assembled this. And just because I thought it looked kind of cool, put little perler beads underneath the LEDs. Now if you notice, the, the original one had a little bit of a gap also. So I don't know if they did that just so you could move the LED position a hair or whatever, but. I already plugged this in and it doesn't work properly. And let me show you what it looks like at least. And I kind of feared this would happen. Okay. As you can see, the LEDs are not changing colors. They're just kind of staying bluish green and whatnot. The reason why is because it's a it's a fast frequency hitting it. So in other words, there's a little tiny microcontroller in each of these LEDs and it's constantly resetting a microcontroller. So they don't have time to go through and pick, pick different colors. So I suppose I could add a, if I, if, I were, if I really felt froggy, I could change this design and add uh, 14148, or you know, switching diodes and like, let's say, little capacitors to smooth out the frequencies. Uh, but I think I might be done. So I get the, this one I'm gonna do. You've seen that one. And now, here is this one. Let's show what this one looks like one more time. That is the Repro Red. Okay, now let's show what the original looks like. This is the original PCB. Okay, so what do you guys think I should put in? Tell me in the comments down below. Should I put this dim original or the, the reproduction super bright? Or should I maybe hack the uh, color changing board so it actually does the task that I intended, intended it to do? Whatever you guys say in the comments, I'm going to average, average it together. And that's the one that I will put in this machine. I guess that is it for now. Hey, we're getting somewhere. Uh, boy, most of this video was wasted by that stupid monitor, wasn't it? Um, so hey, the board works now. I wish I could have showed you some of that footage, but um, you, you know, you know, you know what I think actually happened to that SD card? <clears throat> I think my son grabbed it and wrote pi position data on it, and it probably went out to someone with their pi position. So I lost like a whole whole another video talking about how I did the PCB repair and so on. But oh well. So I guess that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you got this far, you guys are awesome. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Have a good one. Okay, to show you an example of what those color changing LEDs are supposed to do, let me plug this into the Victrix. <clears throat> this is a PCB I made so I can play different game cartridges and stuff on my Victrix. Ah, see how that changes color? That's what I intended it to do, but I guess it won't work because it's, the actual frequency is turning off and on so quickly that 
it's just constantly re hitting the reset button, basically. But, alright, I guess that is it.